everyone. Um, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah. How sweet of you to join us. Yeah. Um, I would like to confirm that um, we posted the agenda in three public places in town and on the website and emailed to interested parties. So we're um, legally um, ready to go forward with this meeting and we will take um, public comment after we've gone through the agenda with limiting it to five minutes per person per topic and um, we'll start off with the prior meeting minutes from January 24th the regular select board meeting you need to have any changes or corrections on those no they sir pretty thorough to me so I'd move to approve those <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we also have the um, meetings from the special select board meeting of January 11th. Short and sweet. I Short move to sweet. approve those I as they're printed. All in favor? Aye. 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 And also a special select board meeting on January 19th. These were all around trying to figure out when and how we're going to have the town meeting. And I uh, didn't move to approve those. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, we have at the top of the list, we have a guest, Asia. Asha, hi. Asha. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, what what you up to? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Farmer's market. So I, yes. Today, my hat today is the farmer's market manager hat. All right. Okay. So I'm here to officially request permission to use the park for the farmer's market of 2022, mm -hmm. which runs from Memorial Day weekend through Columbus, well, Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. I'm happy that you guys do that. I know we have, um, because of COVID, we asked you to spread out and also um, that also was spreading out the wear on the park. Uh, we stayed away from that main strip along Route 100 last year and it seemed like it did help it out. So I know Frank's been doing a lot of work with um, getting lime on the, on the lawn to get it. Um, trying to bring it back. Trying to bring it back, yeah. Um, How do you feel about the new format of the, the, the flow? So it's been actually really nice. Um, <laughs> it, it allows us to use more of the park, and so actually it brings people kind of more into the heart of the park, so people tend to kind of spread out more. People then kind of wander over to the gazebo. They get food from the market. They wander to the gazebo. So mm -hmm. rather than just kind of sitting on that one area, they do tend to actually spread out. I've, we've had some families then start playing, you know, frisbee back towards the Huntington yeah. House, and while they listen to the music, so it's really, it really has started to move using the kind of the whole park. Um, and in fact, that front area, no one really goes on it because it's really shady. It is really shady. <laughs> so yeah. people I think tend that's to, a lot of why the yeah. grass wouldn't. Um, um, yeah. recover so quickly there, yeah. And yeah. I made sure to stagger the booths. I mean, the booths were never in the same spot every single week, mm -hmm. um, even because I would use the, mo the monument as my marker and move them, you know, so, so it, I mean, it was people, people love the new layout and vendors are happy. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I know that you had concerns if you were further back away from the road, less visibility might mean less participation, mm -hmm. but um, it is safer to have people mm -hmm. a little further away mm -hmm. off Route 100. So I, I'm fine with I, that. I would only suggest that if the if it starts showing a lot of wear there, because if you have a continual use in the same spot all the time, whether you stagger them or not, you still get all the traffic. If it starts to wear, possibly move it to maybe even further back of the monument, maybe for a year or two, and then switch it around a little, you might have to do that just so the grass tries to stay. We mowed it longer this last it summer. It was rough this summer. Yep. It was like a hay field. <laughs> and, but that's because of the traffic, and I was trying to keep the grass better by mowing it high. I know it doesn't look as nice, but with the kind of use it gets, it's harder on the, on the ground. I was more worried about the elderly people who kept tripping over the grass. 
Yeah. And, well, and actually, the law, the length of it actually kind of became an issue for safety in terms of the people, you know, because we had people from the park house coming with their walkers and everything, and it actually was tripping people up, which was hmm. actually kind of tricky um, on my end because technically, um, I hate to say it like this, but if someone trips and falls during the market, I get sued, not the town. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, I understand, obviously, not mowing it down to pigeon, but it was, it was a, my, my farmer husband was eyeing it a little too yeah. enthusiastically. Little <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering whether you could have him change the day that he mows the lawn. Well, we talked about that, and I did speak with him to try to mow it on like a Tuesday. Yeah. Mm. And... A lot of times he didn't get to it at, at that time and the weather didn't cooperate where he could do it. So it's kind of a crapshoot really. Um, so it's, it's nice to try to keep it as good as we can. That's all I wonder. And possibly just police it a little better. You know, I had to pick up garbage a few times and I wasn't happy about that. But, you know, that's okay. Just picked up, you know, trash that was left after your gatherings and that's, and that's fine I mean I I don't mind but just be nice if it was a little bit so I actually pick up that garbage way. every morning Friday and immediately after the market so I'm not sure when you come through maybe it's Friday evening or Saturday after people have visited but I actually end up picking up at least one or two bags of garbage in the morning mm. as my service <laughs> to the right. town before oh the, yes before the market especially yeah. Suzuki week yeah. right. that's I'm a tricky sure week that, yeah. so I end up picking yeah. up a full bag of garbage yep, in the morning when I'm you. setting up on Friday and then immediately after the market and my vendors and the vendors help they clean up everything so if, if there's garbage it must be the late night Friday riot stuff right. I don't know could very, <laughs> yeah. could very well be yeah. We, yeah. we pick up garbage when we get there yeah yeah at you know two o'clock in the afternoon yeah. and we check again for the need yeah. in our general area yep All right, well, I, I, I move to approve their use. Are you going to do a formal um, application for your park use? You oh, yeah. I, think that, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did that last year, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I'm sorry, so. Julie, I should have requested that. And I should have thought to send it to you knowing yeah. this was yeah. on there. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, will definitely, I assume yeah, no, I'll definitely no no problems, that. and we're happy mm -hmm. that you, you all do it. It's Thank people, you. people really love it. And they actually, if you look at through the Airbnbs, um, that are near the t center of town, they all use pictures of the market in their advertising. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> it's even if they themselves don't come to the market, they, it, it is a draw. It is a draw. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, Kevin and Paula, for um, making sure there's produce at the market. <laughs> it's nice to have a farmer's market, have real farmers there. Yeah. Have farmers. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and now we'll uh, move on to the first item. I just pushed you ahead since you're on the guest list here. Uh, we got the bids for the emergency generator for this building here, which is our um, command, center. command center. Um, we've got um, got three bids. One from, from Vermont Power Technologies doing business as Brookfield Services, and they um, gave us. Uh, Two bids, one for a 12 kilowatt hour model for $8,257, and one for a 14 kilowatt for $8,836. We also got a bid from Central Vermont Electrical Contractors, and they um, their price for the 14 kilowatt, and they specified no propane installation um, of $12,375, so it's not clear whether Brookfield bid includes or doesn't include propane. Um, they also put a bid in with propane installation for $16,300, and then a third bid from B.C. Johnson and Company. Um, they have it broken up even differently than the others. They have the bid for the 14 kilowatt generator for $8,493. The propane installation of $6,874. 
And then the electrical upgrade for $16,675 for a grand total of $32,042. So obviously we're not going to award this bid right now because we have to make sure we got apples and oranges, you know, separated and, and right. But um, at least we got three people bidding. We on do. It. Yeah. This so, will happen. Yeah. So we'll um, we'll award this in uh, the future, but we'll work on digesting that information. Thank you for those who bid. Um, <clears throat> we've got. Um, got the um, tax map maintenance contract for CAI. What does that stand for? Oh, had to ask. Had to ask, <laughs> sorry. Um, CAI, oh, technologies. Okay, it um, just says CAI. Anyway. Oh, Cartographic Associations Incorporated. That makes sense. Yeah. And... and it's just their maintenance. Yeah, their maintenance contract for seventeen fifty, not seventeen dollars and fifty cents at uh, one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. That's for the whole year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I move to approve that um, contract. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Right along, we've got a liquor license for Sandy's Books and Bakery. And I'd move to approve. I can second that. Yeah. All in favor? Yep. Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Thank you, Sandy, for running that place. Now we get to the exciting part of the fiscal year 23 budget. That's what you're all here for, to see how much your taxes are going to be next year. Right? Yeah. Um, I'd like to preface this with thanking the Budget and Finance Committee for, we didn't keep track of how many hours, but we did it pretty good this, this year. We did have a few extra meetings at the end to kind of wind it up, but um, everyone worked really hard and, and very thankful for the volunteers that, that did that. So the, um, the amount to be raised by taxes is, this is for the town portion, not the school portion, of course, $966,359. And the, um, no, wait a minute. That's the amount to be raised by taxes. And then when you add in the other funding and grant sources, we come to a total budget of one million three hundred ninety-seven dollars and one million three hundred ninety-seven thousand and eleven dollars. Which will bring us to the fiscal year twenty-two tax rate of um, or the increase of it of two point three. 2.13 percent. We, we really, um, I think at one point we had it at an 18 percent <laughs> increase, and we were like, no, more meetings, can't do that. So, um, we whittled their down some. Yeah. So, we have the, um, the final um, legal warning to sign uh, our lawyers fine tuning that, so we'll, we'll take care of that later on this week. But that's the, that's the information that um, y'all were waiting on there. Um, Martha? I'm Jim. Um, just am I correct that you're going to be approving this at, at some date soon in the future? We've, we've just uh, approved it. We're going to sign the warning, the official Okay, warning. signed. Excuse me. Right. right. I want to make sure. You, yeah, okay. Yeah. But no, this is that. Uh, no more 
discussion, no more meetings about this one. Yeah. All right. Um, budget and so that's in the meeting. So that's coming up. The warning for the annual town meeting is coming to come. And um, we have a um, request to appoint Doreen Jones to fill uh, the vacancy for a library trustee. I think that's great that she's interested and willing to do that. So I'd, I'd move to appoint Doreen Jones to fill who's who, which vacancy? Who is she appointing? Oh, library. My mom. <laughs> yeah, library. Library trustee. You? My mom. Oh, your mom. No, okay. I'm <laughs> All right, she's gone. Oh, yeah. All right, so. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye, okay. Aye, aye. Thank you. And thank you, Yola, that um, she's not here. But Nancy? So you know that Doreen will just, you're appointing her from now until the 28th of March. Right, just to fill this point. And then point. she runs for the remaining one year of Yola's term. Mm -hmm. And then if she wants to stay on, she runs for a five-year term yes. next year. Yeah. All right, well, um, thank her for us, unless she's out there in Zoom land watching. No, she's not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's um, our list of, of new business. Um, Joan, are you um, are you online? You got some more updates for us? Yes, I'm here. Yep. Um, okay. So, um, first item is uh, I had a, a sort of sudden meeting with uh, a couple of folks from Green Mountain now. National Forest, Chris Patrick and Brian Austin, who've been working with on the West Hill Bridge. And uh, we think we're ready to go out to bid now. We have all of our easements lined up. That was the last task we needed. But there, there's still more steps that have to be taken um, on Brian's end. I mean, it's, you know, basically bureaucratic things that need to be go through the system further up the chain at the Forest Service. And there are a couple of problems that have arisen, uh, which may uh, mean that the construction has to be postponed for a year. Um, soon to say yet, they wanted to let us know that it was a possibility. Uh, the reasons are that the Eastern Federal Lands Group that um, uh, Chris and, and Brian report to have been just very slow for the past two years in um, reviewing documents that need to be approved before things can move ahead. Um, not really clear what the what the issue has been, but it's been going on for a while. So um, a whole bunch of documents have been submitted recently to them for their review and approval. And uh, Brian apparently found out just recently that they can't say how long it's going to take to approve those documents. Um, it could be too long a delay, which ends up, uh, we can't move forward without those approvals in hand. And as a result, we may not be able to go out to bid until sometime uh, like May or June, which would be too late, push everything back too, too far for us to be able to do a construction project uh, this year. The second part of the problem with uh, Eastern Federal Lands is funding. Um, apparently, Green Mountain National Forest has been waiting for a long time for funding to come through. They know it's approved, but apparently has to go through a number of steps. And it's not clear that Eastern Federal Lands itself, which is the sort of the regional uh, umbrella of the Green Mountain National Forest, whether they've gotten any money from folks in D.C. Uh, so funding is the second issue, which eventually will come, uh, but they can't say whether it will come soon enough for us to be able to move ahead with construction. So they are going to keep us posted, and both Chris and Brian have offered to come to um, the next uh, meeting or one after that and give us an update and explain things further. Um, otherwise, we're all ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, the documents are prepared, and we were uh, planning to have enough meeting sometime soon to just um, uh, launch all of that, but uh, we're early at least on hold with that. Um, excuse
Excuse me, Joan, could I just ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. um, this was about the West Branch. We have a, I had a fuzzy connection there for a minute. You, this is about the West Branch project, you said. West, West Hill Bridge. Bridge. West Hill? West Hill Bridge. Bridge, okay, thank you, I'm Been sorry. Dealing with for a while. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought, but I just, I couldn't hear you for a minute. I'm sorry, thank you. Okay. Hmm. Well, it is what it is. It is what it oh, is. So I forgot to mention. Yeah. Part of the issue also is is it's not clear whether there's going to be a temporary bridge available by the time we need it. Uh, our service does not have a bridge that's large enough for that crossing. Um, and at some point we asked uh, a couple months ago we asked um, VTran whether they might have a bridge, and what I recall from that was that those all of their temporary bridges are going to already be in use for other projects. I knew we shouldn't have sold that train car. <laughs> 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 but um all right. Well yeah it's um who's surprised? Not me. <laughs> no. Government's moving slow. Well, yeah. Stay stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have some good news but yeah. Wanna for uh, something less than that. Um, and then uh, another item I just need to run by you regarding uh, Town Garage Stormwater Project. It's got bid for the fifth time, and we're hoping the fifth time will be a charm. Uh, bids are due on March 7th. And um, the question is during the design phase, which is way back in, I think, 2020, if you remember that. Uh, we agreed to provide a match for the cost of the design, it was matching a matching grant of 10% of the cost, um, and the amount was $3,535. Um, and I was reminded of that because WRP sort of lost track of it uh, back in 2020, you know, when things were sort of going haywire with the pandemic and folks working from home and stuff. Um, they forgot about it, and so did we. So uh, we still owe them that amount, and I went back in my records just to verify that we did agree to it, and I do have records that we did. Um, and at one point, uh, probably more than a year ago, I did submit a partial match, uh, which included my time on the project, Cooter's time, and then we also contributed uh, about $1,200 worth of work that was done by a contractor to dig the test holes. If you remember when those were done back below, when we were looking for uh, the location for to place the defender. So that leaves us with a match still owing to WRP of about $2,300. And talking with Cooter about it, uh, we agreed that one way that he felt would be a good way to match um, and WRP likes the ideas that we need to provide uh, or someone needs to provide some fill for, um, for the project. And the estimate for that is going to be uh, one load of, um, uh, of a dump truck, dump, a dump load will cost approximately that amount. And that's going to be the right uh, amount of fill that the engineer estimates is going to be needed. So uh, I'm proposing that we provide that amount of gravel for the project when the time comes, and then we will have met the match requirements. And WRP likes the idea, Cooter, Cooter likes the idea, so I'm hoping you will too. All right, that's great. Thanks for figuring that out. Um, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> so we'll see if we get any bids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, they're going about it a different way. They uh, got some recommendations from the engineer for larger size contractors who would A, have the equipment and also have the experience in installing defenders. So rather than trying to keep um, the work local, which is always something WRP tries to do, it just wasn't working, obviously. Yeah. So uh, we're hopeful that we'll get some of these bigger contractors who have the wherewithal to do a project like this, because we're real that uh, it's more complicated than it appeared on paper. It's All typical right. as well. <clears throat> well, 
What else you got for us? Um, other than that, I'm just uh, working on the annual VTrans uh, required financial stuff, which I'll have. Well, I uh, we can't do much on the actual financial statement or the financial plan until you, the budget is passed. But there's some other paperwork, if you remember, that happens annually. Yeah. Uh, like updating the, the standards and procedures for road work. So I'll have that ready for you at the next select board meeting. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, Joan, will there be some time where we can sit down and go over, over these bids for the Yeah, uh, we need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of complicated. Uh, okay, so I'll be in touch with you and we can uh, okay. meet and go through them. That'd be good. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, that's it. Great. Thank you, Joan. Yes. Yep. Yes, okay. Um, Anybody here to speak on behalf of the library or on Zoom? I, no, nobody on no, Zoom. No, no, nobody. All righty. And the um, highway is running pretty good. I, um, I got a phone call about 9.30 last Saturday night that there was a <laughs> Dollar General truck off the road on Northview Drive. <laughs> <laughs> the hollows. Yeah, and they asked if we could tell them treat the road because the wreckers on the way. And I said, well, that's a, a dirt road. I don't we think don't we're going to do any. We don't even have a Dollar treating. General here. No. So. <laughs> anyway, I, I went and looked. It didn't. See, I couldn't see where it went in the ditch, but it was um serves them right for <laughs> taking the truck on the back roads. Anyway, that's um, that's my my report from the highway world. <laughs> so how was the GPS? I guess. Good yeah, definitely GPS. Yeah. yeah. Um, Terry, you got anything on to everything holding up in the cold weather? Yeah, everything's. Yeah, did you um, get that uh, alert this afternoon about to be on your guard in case Russia decides to cyber attack our sewer system? Actually, I have a class on that on Thursday. Yeah. So hopefully they don't attack before Thursday. Right. Yeah. Hopefully they get the memo to wait. <laughs> Have them hold back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we're a little bit off the radar, I hope, for that. Yeah, yeah, I would hope so. But we're going to, we'll have our air compressor for the fire department this week. Oh, good. Great. Cool. So, and the price will be fifteen seven fifty. That's the one you had your eye on there. Yeah. Awesome, that's a good avenue. But um, I'm joking aside, is there what what in our our water or sewer system is um, is uh, critically connected with the internet? Well, just all my readings go through that. Yeah. But our water is not. We don't have we don't have any uh, monitoring on the, the water that goes through the internet or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, but all my sewers do. Yeah, so it's just the reading. The system would still function. It just yeah, we'd still have water. Just, just can't flush. I'd so <laughs> Just can't flush. You know, I, I don't think they could make it happen to anything, but I'll tell you better after. After the meeting, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was just funny that came through this just before the meeting. Yeah, because I just signed up for it, was it, a couple weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Um, thank you. Um, is um, Jeff out there? Is uh, the en energy coordinator? Have you got got anything to report, Jeff? Um, yeah. Hi. Uh, I submitted a draft uh, report uh, from the energy coordinator for the uh, town report. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, in an inch of its life. Um, I had a conversation um, with Norwich Technologies. They are going to be the contractor for GMP's resiliency zone. Um, what they will be putting in is called um, agrivoltaics. These will be PV panels on a very tall rack in the old uh, gravel pit um, um, because they'll be enabling uh, grazing to occur underneath them. Um, Norwich Technologies is going to take a look at um, whether there's extra space for additional 
functional beauty panels there, and also whether the public service or public utility commission um, might change a little bit in their definition of projects that could, if there was land and with PUC modification, um, could potentially provide a, a location for um, community solar in mm -hmm. the town. Well, that would be nice. So we'll continue following up on that. Yeah. Um, the Rochester Area Climate Initiative um, at the end of the year had to say goodbye to John Copens. Um, yep. John has moved on. Um, he's he just moved on to the old spokes home in um, the Burlington area. Uh, Alyssa Johnson is taking over um, the support responsibilities uh, for us under the RACI uh, uh, project, and uh, we've started setting up a Google, Do Google Docs. Um, Anna Isaacson's going to set that up so that the three task forces involved will be able to share information and people update each other's work without worrying about uh, whether we're working on the right copy or not. Um, EV charging, uh, I have a call into um, Green Mountain Power. What I'd like to do is find out um, where the bright line is in each of the proposed spots where GMP stops paying and they would expect Rochester to fund improvements necessary for the charging station that they've proposed. I hope to hear back from them tomorrow. The um, uh, Jen forget her last name. Jen uh, was not in the office uh, today. That's the scoop. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, much appreciated, Jeff. So uh, moving on to... You're welcome. Yeah. Moving on to the um, old business, we have some... Um, the legal trail discussion. We have some folks, I think, in the, in the in the house that have some want to talk more on that. Is that why you're here, Larry, or you're just looking for a warm place to get out of the cold? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I just saw it on the agenda. I didn't know if you were take, taking any further action or. We um, no, we haven't taken any action, and as far as I understand, we haven't been approached um, with any proposal or petition or request from the people that were investigating that um, that as an option I know they um, they did actually contact um, Chris bump about the process for applying for a driveway off of route 100 too so I guess they're just exploring all their all their options and um, yeah haven't heard anything back there's been a lot of footprints going up the side of that hill yeah, from, off of Route 100. From Route 100. <laughs> Good <Yeah>. for them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So now nothing, homes. nothing really, nothing really to report on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the Green Mountain Power location of charging stations. I guess that was folds into Jeff a little touch bit. Touch Jeff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Touch on with Jeff there. Um, so that is really. Um, and that leads us to public comment. Is anyone out there that has um, anything they'd like to contribute to tonight's romantic meeting? Well, going once, going twice. Thank you all for, for joining us. And um, we're going to pay some bills and go home to our loved ones. <laughs> Right. Happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you all. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you.